In this video, we're going to take a look at some basic concepts around money. But before we do that, we should give a basic understanding of what is meant by barter, the double coincidence of wants. Then we're going to clarify some terms that relate to cash and money so you have a clear understanding of what we need to know before we progress. And I want to start with this image, which is uh, somebody offering free house painting in exchange for an older car or motorcycles and scooters. So there's no money being exchanged here. And that's exactly what bartering is. It's a type of trade in which goods or services are directly exchanged for other goods and or services without the use of money. So you'll notice this person's offering a service. They're looking for a good. There's no money being exchanged. That's the key thing to know. But the problem is with money, let's say, for example, you're looking at these two figures here. The figure on the left has like a clear stone. The figure on the right has what looks like a maroon color stone. If the figure on the left wants a maroon stone and is willing to offer a clear stone in exchange, and the person on the right wants a clear stone and is willing to offer the maroon stone, then this works out. But they have to have the exact thing the other person wants in exchange. And it has to be perfect. And if there's any mismatch, then there's an issue. And that condition where I have what you want and you have what I want is called a double coincidence of wants. And that is what is necessary for a trade to go down. Essentially, what needs to be offered on both sides for the exchange to occur. Now, moving on, I wanted to show you a picture of a bank vault because we're going to talk about banks in a moment. And the first part I want to address here is cash. So cash, if you see where I'm dragging the mouse over, cash can be paper currency or coins. So I have some coins at my desk that uh, you're probably hearing right now. It's going to be either the notes or the currency or the coins, and that's cash. And bank deposits are different. Bank deposits, I can take my cash and put it at the bank, or maybe I could put a check and deposit a check at the bank. But the bank doesn't necessarily store that cash physically. It can be an electronic account of what I have at the bank. So if you think that you drop your money off, when you take your money and you put it at the bank, they don't necessarily keep physical currency there. It's electronic records. So there's a difference between these two. Writing a check is essentially telling a bank what to do with your money and where to send it. So that's what it is. A check is a document ordering the bank to pay money from your account to a payee, right? Somebody you want to give money to. But again, you might write a check to somebody and there might not be any physical currency that exchanges. You, you write person X a check, they deposit at their bank and the bank has a an account for that person and now your bank is sending money to that bank it could be all electronic most likely it is electronic finally we have liquidity and this concept of near money so what i want to do is identify and clarify what is meant by near money this is a little bit tricky but if you follow my explanation hopefully it makes sense near money is not money but it's something that can be easily turned into cash very quickly. Like let's say for example, if I had a house, a house is not very quick to turn into cash unless you lose a lot of the value of it. But maybe you have something like a certificate of deposit or a money market account or a, uh, like a kind of a bond from the government that is worth something that will retain its value if you sell it and very quickly becomes cash without losing much value. And liquidity is that ability to turn into cash, right? Turning an asset into cash and how quickly and how little loss of value occurs when that asset is turned into cash. So if you have a house, like I said before, you sell it, you're probably going to lose a lot of the value if you sell it immediately at a deep discount to get cash right away. But if you have a government bond that you sell, I highly doubt you'll lose much value, if any, on the sale of that bond. So liquidity and near money, hopefully these clarify for you the different degrees or help you understand how uh, financial assets can have different degrees of liquidity. And those things that are closer to cash are going to be considered near money. Those things that are harder to turn into cash without losing value will be further away. So if I go back to the beginning and we look at our objectives, hopefully by now you understand what is meant by barter and the double coincidence of wants. 
and you can define cash, liquidity, near money and bank deposits. With this basic understanding, you should be able to move into uh, an introductory understanding of money and later monetary policy.